Norman Bone, Managing Director and Chairman of Leonardo UK. Thank you for joining us on the FIM programme. Leonardo, disparate amount of businesses and it's all coming together now. So tell us how it's working. January this year, we, we launched Leonardo MW, uh, a new legal company in the UK for exactly that reason. We wanted to be a single company. We wanted to act in a singular way. We wanted to be a single voice to the customer because we were confusing them. We were confusing ourselves. How's it coming together? Well, at this show, I think we've been phenomenally successful in looking like a single company and acting like a single company. Um, we're, we're approaching the meetings. We've got helicopter people in the meetings. We've got airborne in space. We've had land and naval. We're all sitting in the meeting with the one customer. Previously, that might have been three different meetings. And that has come together in a really powerful voice. So you're working very well inside the company. What about outside the company? On the walls here, you plastered the thing over innovation, partnership, and so on. How are the partnerships working? Well, I think the partnerships is something that we've been really evolving. And we're now doing a series of board to boards with customers, with the UK MOD, with other industry partners. And I can give you two or three really good examples. So here at the show today, we were delighted to announce a new partnership. It's ourselves with Discovery Air and Inspire, two best of breed partners for us, to work together to deliver a program for ASDOT. And we think we're incredibly well positioned. Discovery Air bring great capability over three continents, mainly known in the UK for the, uh, the US for the Red Air capability. Spire, tremendously innovative SME uh, in the UK, and ourselves. And when I say it's ourselves, it may be led by the Airborne and Space Division, but it's going to have our aircraft division, it's going to have helicopters, so we'll be a single Leonardo working with these two other companies to deliver a great capability. If I use a different one, um, we were part of BA Systems uh, a number of years ago. Uh, the work we're now doing with BA Systems, we're more integrated and closer to them than we were when we were part of the company. And that speaks volumes of the way that the people in both companies have decided to work together. How has that morphed itself? We've won a contract to deliver Typhoon avionics support with BA Systems. Team Titan, great solution. 40% off the avionics costs, saving to the customer. That money is going to be reinvested in new capabilities for the Typhoon. So what happens here? We get the end customer in the RAF, he's involved, we're very transparent with each other. He's getting cost savings and he's getting reinvestment. So it's good for him, he's got more capability and we're delivering it for less. And that is when relationships and partnerships really start trusting each other and showing what each can do in the relationship to give a better solution to the customer. Now, if, if you like, the, the work we're doing with the typhoon and so on is today's threats. The thing that actually terrifies me is cyber. Um, what's Leonardo doing in that sector? I'm going to talk about two bits of what we're doing on, on cyber. Firstly, there's a traditional cyber environment and we're partnered uh, with NATO to deliver um, the NSERT program and that's protecting all the NATO countries and we've already done it at their headquarters and now rolling it out their 28 sites. So that's the traditional cyber environment, we're very strong in it and we're delighted to be partnered for NATO. The other part of uh, the cyber effect now is a kind of move into the EW, uh, electronic warfare area, and that cyber effect is getting more and more. We've got to protect the electronics on an aircraft, on a helicopter, on a, any platform. So those electronics are just as susceptible to cyber attack as your home computer. So we've got to protect them, but we've also got to use them to deliver a cyber effect. So while a lot of this thing, these things are top secret, we can't go into it, we are now working with major entities, including the UK, of how we think about delivering a cyber effect from our electronics, not just protecting. Well, finally, the, another great concern is people, where are we going to get the, the right people from? You're doing some interesting technology things. Are you going to get the the engineers, the technologists, the innovators of tomorrow to come to join you in Leonardo? That's about the hardest thing we have to face. As the UK, we've really got a shortage. 
we've got to upskill the UK. We've got to make people proud to be an engineer again. And if you're an engineer in Germany, you're called an engineer. And people wear it with a badge of pride. If you're an, an Italian and you're an engineer, it's your so social status. You're held as a very high states person. In the UK, engineer doesn't mean as much. And we've got to get that prestige back into the title. With that, we get to persuade our future kids that take the hard sciences at school. Get it interesting. Too long are we not educating our kids in hard science when they're playing with Playstations, with Xboxes, and they don't understand the science behind that, but they've learned to play with it. So they want to do software, but they don't want to do the hard sciences, and we've got to make it interesting because there is a huge capability in the UK. The UK's heritage, no matter which part of it you come from, has been in developing great engineering solutions. We're an engineering society and we've got to make it stimulating and sparkling for our kids to want to be future engineers. I'll tell you what, as a parent, there is no better career to put your kids in for a guaranteed future income than being an engineer.